You know, sweets, I like what I've heard about you, especially the name, Harley Quinzel. Rework it a bit, and you get Harley Quinn. Alright guys, so the first thing you need is a long sleeve burnout shirt like Harley's, which I'll link down below. You will also need transfer paper for light fabrics, a t-shirt cardboard, blue dye in Bahama Blue, and fabric ink in the color Crimson. You need this specific one and I'll explain why when we get to it. The first thing you want to do is try on the shirt and take a sharpie to draw a little dash right below your elbows so you know how short to cut it when it's on the table. This fabric does shrink upwards after cutting so cut a little more than you think you need. Next cut off the collar. With this don't be too neat about it but also be careful not to cut off too much. Next, roughly measure out 2 inches and mark it. This is where the end of the red will go. Take the crimson fabric ink and mix it in with water until it's slightly watery consistency. So when applying this, I recommend using a sponge. I don't recommend using a brush because brushes can be too harsh on the fabric, causing a lot of wear and fuzziness. Be sure you map out where all the lines go while you're wearing the shirt before you start painting onto it. This will prevent making mistakes or putting on too much color. Next, take water and soak the edges and take your sponge to help the edges bleed down. You want the bleeding to be about a centimeter or two in length. Now just do the same thing on the back side and wait for that to dry before you continue on to the next steps. So now for the left sleeve, you want to follow the instructions of the back of the blue dye package. Basically, you're going to heat up four cups of water and add eight spoons of salt along with a dye powder and mix that until it's completely dissolved. All right, so this is the tricky part. Only dip the edge of the left sleeve up a few inches. Then dip the sleeve in plain water so it creates a super light blue going up the sleeve. And you're gonna be doing this back and forth until it's a nice ombre. When you're done, Dip the very edge of the sleeve as a final touch. Now just wait until the shirt completely dries before you move forward. So pour out some fabric ink with no water added so we can create the stripes. We're not adding water just because we want these stripes to be a little bit tougher and we want it to be very opaque. Again, put on the shirt and mark where the stripes should sit. Here are the measurements that I followed. Next, you want to use any kind of divider, anything that'll fit through the sleeve. I'm using a leather checkbook to put inside the sleeve so when we paint it, it doesn't bleed to the other side. Next, you want to use painter's tape and put the tape to outline the stripes where you're going to make it. This will help you make perfect straight lines. Now, just take the fabric ink and sponge it on. When that's done, be super careful and flip it over so you can do the back side. You can wait till it dries, but since that takes an hour and I'm super impatient, I'm going to be doing this while it's wet. Be sure that if you are doing it while it's wet, 
that every time you lift up or move the shirt from the table, you clean the table so the paint doesn't smudge onto the other parts of the shirt when you put it back down. Also, don't forget to do the other sleeve as well. Now you want to pour some clean water into a bowl and take your saturated sponge that already has dye on it and dip it into the water to create a super, super light dye. You want more water than paint for this. So for the right sleeve only, take the light dye you just made and paint downwards from the stripes to create that smudge effect her right sleeve has. Alright, so once that's done, you're going to be moving on to the logo. You want to use the fabric transfer sheets that I mentioned earlier and print out the logo backwards so when you put it on the shirt, it reads correctly. If you guys aren't familiar with transfer sheets, there are instructions in the back that you can follow. So you want to set your iron on maximum heat and no steam. Then cut out your logo as close to the logo as possible. To prepare your shirt, you want to iron it out and make sure that there's no wrinkles on it. Then carefully place the logo a centimeter or two at the edge of the red and be sure that it's centered. Then take your iron and press firmly in circles for about 4 minutes or until the logo peels back easily. Now Harley's shirt is a tiny bit too small for her so cut off 3-4 to four inches off the bottom. But don't get confused, this is not a crop top and it doesn't show your entire stomach. It only shows a little bit of skin just enough to show a bit of her tattoo. Now you want to locate where your belly button would be and cut out a long hole. Next, just cut out the holes based on the photo above. In total, you should have 7 large holes. Now that you're done with the holes, you're going to need white thread and black thread because we will be sewing. So Harley's top has these black lines sewed on across the red edge. I tried my best to show you guys how I did this visually, but if you're still confused, I'll link down below some basic sewing tutorials to get you started. You're just going to repeat this exact step that I just shown over and over all the way to the end and when you're finished, tie it off. So right where we just sewed all those black lines, there is a little bit of a deeper red and it kind of ombres up so you're going to be adding that leftover paint that you use for the sleeves to deepen that line since it's supposed to be darker. Alright, so now I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the cross stitching on her side. The first thing you want to do is fold over a very small flap and pin that down to the hole. So you're going to go from your armpit down to the hole in the middle. Then you want to do a basic cross stitch going down. So I hope visually you guys can follow along with what I'm doing because you're basically just repeating the steps that I'm showing over and over all the way down until you get to the end. But if you guys are still confused on how to do this, I will also link a tutorial on how to cross stitch in the description box. Alright, so she has another stitch going from a hole to hole. So you're going to cut this hole down to the other hole and then fold it right back over as if you ripped it and you're trying to fix it. Then you want to take your white thread and do a lace running stitch which is basically just going in and out of the fabric until you hit the end. Now when you're done with that one, you're going to do that exact same step but on the belly button hole. 
and once you're finished with that hole, then you're finished and your shirt is finally complete. Alright, so moving on to the shorts. It's really easy to make, so just follow along and you will have some sparkly shorts in no time. So for this, you're going to need red and blue 3mm holographic sequin fabric. This is the exact fabric Harley Quinn used, so I will link down below where I bought this. You just want to cut out two large pieces of each color and then face the sequin sides facing each other with the blue being on the bottom. Be sure that you do that correctly or else you can mess up the entire process. Line up the sequence at the edge and run pins down it to hold it in place. Next you want to do a zigzag stitch to stitch those two pieces of fabric together. Again, if you guys don't know how to do that, I would link down below an easy tutorial for you guys to follow. And I also highly recommend getting a sewing machine to do this because it will take forever if you do it by hand. I just don't have a sewing machine so I kind of don't have the option. So after you're done stitching, just cut off the excess fabric that's left in between and flip it over. Now you're going to need two manila folders. I'm just using manila folders because that's what I have. You can use just about anything like fabric stencils and such, but that's what I'm going to use. So use that and tape them together to create one large stencil. Now find a pair of cotton boy short underwears that are comfortable and fit you the way you want the Harley Quinn shorts to fit you and cut open the sides. We will be using this as a guide and reference. Lay the underwear down onto the folders with the front part of your underwear facing up and farthest away from you. Next pin them down to the folders at every corner and trace the underwear with a colored sharpie. Next, draw an inch or two around that line to create a seam allowance so when you sew the edges inward, you don't mess with the original size needed. Now you just want to cut that out. And when you fold it over, it should look like your underwear. Alright, so you don't forget which side is supposed to be red and which side is supposed to be blue. Write down the colors each side should be. Now draw a straight line down the center just to give a visual guide of where the lining should go. Then line up the fabric line to the guideline you just drew and pin it down. Then just cut the fabric out around it. And those two little dangly things at each end is that seam that we created which I don't recommend cutting. You can just fold it over and it'll be fine. If you do cut it, your seam that you sewed will pop open. Now fold over the edges, pin it, and do a zigzag stitch to close them off. Be sure to use the right color thread so it doesn't show. Now go ahead and put on the shorts and pin inward the edges of the leg holes to how cheeky you want them. Make sure that you are doing this while it's on your body so that way when you put it on, you don't have any surprises. Then when you've got them exactly how you want them and they're pinned in perfectly, take them off carefully so you don't poke yourself and begin sewing the edges in a zigzag stitch. When you're done, cut off the excess fabric on the inside if necessary. 
FYI, I didn't add an elastic to the leg holes because it fits me perfectly, but if yours is loose for any reason, you can add an elastic band, which I'll show you how to do next. Now you should have something that looks like this. Alright, so on to the waist. You can use any size elastic you need, but I'll be using the skinny one just because it's better for this kind of outfit. So the first thing you want to do is measure out your hip line. Then subtract 2 inches from that number. This will be how long your elastic needs to be. Now you're going to layer the ends on top of each other and do a zigzag stitch to tie them together. Alright, so adding the elastic onto the actual outfit. Let's do this. You want to find the line and stitch the elastic into the middle of that line. You want to do this to the back and to the front only. Now you want to put on the shorts again and fold the fabric over the elastic to how low you want them to sit on your hip. Then pin completely around it that way it's secure when you take it off. So when you take it off, the pin should still be on it and it should look like this. Next you want to carefully turn them inside out so it's easier to see. You're going to be doing a simple running stitch right under where the elastic is sitting. You don't want to sew on top of the elastic or the elastic cannot stretch. Make sure it's right under the elastic line. Again, cut off the extra fabric. Now you should have something like this, which means you're done. Okay, so for Harley's awesome Adidas shoes, I got these knockoff Harley boots from China, but they're missing so much detail, which we will be adding in ourselves. So for right now, you're gonna need your acrylic paint in crimson and extreme Sharpies in black. Harley has these red lines right under the black lines, which is missing on these shoes, so we will put that in ourselves. We will be using tape to create a guide. Now take the red paint and apply a total of four coats so the red is super opaque. Now you just wanna let that completely dry. While that's drying, draw on the black lining that Harley's boots have. In this case, just follow my lead. Also, when you get into corners, be sure to use tape so you don't paint onto other parts of the shoes. Now that we're done with that, take white nail polish to fix up the red lines. I realize Harley's lines are much thinner than mine, so I'll be correcting them with this. I'm using white nail polish simply because it doesn't require too many coats, it's gel-like so you have less chances of messing up, and it's just overall a better appearance than paint.
Okay, so to make these Adidas look super convincing and really authentic, we're going to be creating shoe tags. Adding this detail definitely brings these shoes to a whole new level, so I really recommend going through with it. You're going to need to print out the logo with transfer paper. I printed out fake Adidas logos just so I don't get into any legal trouble here, and we will be following the same exact steps as we did for the t-shirt. I printed out 8 tags, but you really only need 4, I just printed extra just in case I messed up. Be sure to iron these onto a white cloth so the logo in the middle shows up white. So once you've got them ironed on, you just want to cut them out into 4 separate squares. You want to leave a bit of white cloth on the top and the bottom of the square only because we need that part. So to make this look like the real shoe, we will be doing a running stitch down the white line since shoe tags normally are stitched onto shoes. Now take a sharpie to blacken any parts that you see white. And you're also going to do these exact steps on the bottom white panel as well. Alright, so now that you're done with the shoe tags, you want to open up your shoes and expose the tongues. Locate the middle of the tongue and you're going to be hot gluing the top and the bottom edges only to the shoe onto the tongues. And now you have some authentic Carly Quinn shoes. Alright guys, so now we're ready to knock out some real bad guys. So I found my baseball bat at a thrift shop for only $4, which I highly recommend doing to save you guys some money. So you're just going to sand off your bat so you don't have any gloss coatings, no marks, no logos, you just want it completely plain. I have a sanding machine, but you can definitely use basic sandpaper to do this. So for the bat's design, you'll need the Sharpies Extreme Multicolor Pack, acrylic paint in crimson, acrylic paint in ultramarine blue, white electrical tape for the handle, masking tape, and a sponge. So for a regular sized bat like mine, the white handle should be three hands long. So just go ahead and wrap around the white tape. Okay, done with that. Simple, easy. Let's move on to the diamond design. You want the top edge of the tape to sit at 1.6 inches above the base of the white tape. This is for the bottom dark maroon ring she has on her back. Then measure 4 inches in between and mask that point around with tape. Roll the bat around. If you're seeing an up and down wave pattern, it's crooked and needs to be fixed. If you don't, then it's perfect. Now find the middle point and mark it down. Then measure across and mark at the fifth mini dash of each side of the three inch mark. This will be your guide for your diamond. 
Take masking tape and connect each corner of it from the center to the points you drew on the sides. Do the same for the bottom. Now everything should align perfectly. Next, take a pencil and trace a rough sketch of that diamond and then remove the tape when you're finished. If you like the way it looks, continue on. Take the same tape starting at the corner of the last diamond and create a new diamond based off of that. The diamonds should connect to each other at the corners. Alright, so now that you have all your diamonds on there, mask out the diamonds because you will be painting the triangles, which are the parts outside of the diamonds. And you will be using your crimson acrylic paint to do this. Now for the inner blue diamond, measure out one centimeter from the top and bottom and mark that. And for the sides, measure out half a centimeter from the corners. Again, connect point to point creating a mini diamond inside in which we will be painting in blue. And you're going to repeat these exact same steps on the other diamonds as well. If you mess up, you can scratch out any mistakes with a needle. So now for the maroon colored bands outlining this design, you're going to want to take off the tape. For the bottom band, leave a very small gap between the white tape and the red area. Draw a line so you know where to mask. Apply masking tape at the edge of the red and at the edge of the line you drew. Measure out one centimeter from the top red line and mask it the same. Now take a black sharpie and color the blank area in. This will help you create the red shade that you need. Next, just mask the bottom half of that and paint over it with your red paint. When this dries, it'll turn into a dark maroon color just like Harley's bat. So for the main design, you want to print out the word which I'll link down below where to find it and make sure you size the photo according to how big your bat is. That is very important for the words to fit properly. Using a manila folder taped to the front of the words, you can use a light behind it to trace the words and create your very own stencil. When you're done, cut out the letters with a razor. So I already did the good part to show you how it'll look. Be sure when you do the night part that there's a little gap in between both of those words. You're going to take your pencil and trace out the letters.
And when you're done with that, take a fine brush and paint inside the letters you drew. Be very careful so you don't mess up. And I also recommend adding two layers of paint for that nice crimson red to show up. When that's dry, take your black sharpie and outline the letters. Now it should look something like this. Now this next step is very important. Glaze your bat with car paint glazer before you do the tiny words or else your words will bleed out and get really ugly. So for this you're going to need a blue, black, and red extreme sharpie. So her paragraph starts right under the D of good night. So you want to sketch out a rough line so you don't pass it as you write. There's also a centimeter gap between each letter on each side so also draw in a gap as well. Now in the description box, I have written down what her bat says entirely, so be sure to check that out as a reference. And when it comes to which words are which colors, basically in the lullaby, all the bad words like kill are in red, and all the emotional words like cry or ha 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 are in blue. Every other word is black. And now you're ready to knock some people out. So for her necklace, I bought the one from Hot Topic for only $20 and all we're going to be doing is changing the color of the band. All you have to do is take off the put in letters and use acrylic gold paint in glorious gold. Now keep in mind the paint must be acrylic, if it's anything else it can melt the leather band. Just sponge on a very thin coat all over the band and put back on the letters when it's dry and that's it! So Harley's belt is quite simple. If you guys want an exact size replica and design, I really recommend finding any spike belt from Hot Topic because that store sells the exact sizing and design as her belt. You're just going to take acrylic gold paint and paint over the studs one by one. Don't worry if the paint doesn't cover completely the first time, it's going to take a few layers to get a complete coverage. A quicker way would be spray painting it, but be careful with that because you can end up spraying the little wedges in between the spikes and it might not look as good. Also be sure to paint the belt holes and anything else that is not gold. Now on to the belt buckle. I'm so sorry but my camera didn't record this process, I don't even know what happened but all I basically did was cut a piece of thin wood into a diamond shape with the machine and then I covered that with a thick layer of liquid plastic. A more easy version would be making this out of polymer clay or thin metal sheet but you can even purchase the diamond buckle by itself on Etsy so there are options. So you're going to take the same gold paint and cover it with two layers of it. If you want it to look more shiny or metallic, you can add a gloss or a metallic coat on top. I already installed one side to show you what's coming, but you want to screw a hole on the left and right side of the diamond so you can place it through the hole. It's important that your diamond edges reach each point of the hole, so consider that when you make your diamond. To install the diamond securely, you are going to need a small washer disc, which you can find these at any home improvement store, and you're going to need a small screw. Be sure that your screw head is larger than the disc hole and that the screw itself is not long. So place your washer first and then place the screw through the hole. Then tighten the screw with the screwdriver. Thank you. 
As you can see, I placed a diamond in the first three holes of the belt like Harley, so be sure you do the same. So next you're going to need cable clamps because Harley's main buckle is clamp hidden behind rather than through the belt like a normal belt would tie. So first you want to figure out how loose you want the belt. Once you find the point where you want the buckle to be tied, take the clamps and super glue it down on the area you chose. Also be sure your clamps are facing toward the end of the belt as well or it won't work. Just a tip, use wax paper to press firmly so your fingers don't stick to it because that would be bad. Now to wear the belt, just pull back the tip of the belt and run your buckle right under the clamps. Now it's secure and this is the finished product. So the gun holster I found at Hot Topic and it was actually really cheap so I recommend just picking it up from there rather than DIYing it. I also found the jacket at Hot Topic but beware, even though it does look very nice, the colors are flip flopped in the back. I don't know why but that's what it is. As for the fishnets, Harley wears micro fishnets but those tend to be way more expensive than regular ones so I'm just wearing regular ones but I will link down below the exact fishnets that she used. And as for the accessories, I'll link those down below as well. I can't wait to show you my toys. If you made it this far, congratulations, because this was a very, very long video. But as a thank you, I'm going to be doing a giveaway. So I'm going to be giving away the put-in choker. This is the same one from the DIY. And there are only two ways to enter. The first way to enter is on Twitter. All you have to do is copy the link of this video, post it onto Twitter with the hashtag JBunty giveaway, and you're entered. The second way to enter is on Instagram. So what you're going to do on Instagram is repost a photo that I have on my account of this necklace with the hashtag JPunzi giveaway and you're entered on there. So different rules for different social media platforms but basically the same thing. Also this is international so literally anyone from anywhere can enter and I'm going to be posting the winners on Instagram and on Twitter so everyone knows who won. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. Stay tuned for my next one because it's also Suicide Squad related and you guys know exactly what that is and I'm very excited to show you. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys in my next video.